So three years ago, actually I've got a date here, the 30th of January, 2019. I started to take coding seriously, uh, learning a server-side language. Uh, I read up, I watched a lot of YouTube, read articles and January 30th was the day that I received a very big book on software development. I decided to bite into all the hype about learning to code, uh, working at NASA or Tesla or Facebook. So I bought into all the hype. Um, I got this really thick book. I read it all kind of understood a little bit. Anyway, that's where it started. And three years later, three and a half years later now, I definitely have a grapple on what programming is, what's entailed in server-side code, front-end and back-end development, and the ins and outs of how to build cool stuff. So I want to share with you just kind of a flashback of where I was to where I am now and um, hopefully share with you some useful things that I've learned along the way. And um, anything that I want to kind of put out into the world is coming from a place of sifting through all the noise just to get a few little nuggets of, of useful information that I can put to practice straight away. Um, you learn a lot of just in case terminology and information and when you're learning sometimes it's helpful and sometimes it's not so the things that i want to put out into the world are things that you can practice and use straight away with simple things it doesn't have to be complicated and um if i can kind of demystify and get rid of all the 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 hype and the nonsense and get to the useful parts that's all i intend to do so um Anyway, this channel is going to be a collection of those ideas. Most of them will be fairly short just because I want to get to that point and adhere to that um, concept or principle for you to pick up the cool things and keep moving. If you're deciding to learn to code, um, hopefully this is a, a resource and something that is useful to you. So anyway, I'm going to read something from my website. It's just a a quick blog, just in case you don't want to read it. Uh, See if this is useful to you. So, um, There's a lot of content revolving around learning to code. Building apps, machine learning, AI, working for NASA, for Facebook. Just like you, I thought, hell yeah. I can do that. I can learn new things. Then it began the endless Google searches to find information on how to get started with coding. Perfect, I found a course online and it's free. NASA, here we come. 20 minutes later, I don't get it. Why am I learning this? Why am I typing into a black box? What's a terminal? And the pain begins. Getting started with coding and having no context or background with computers was tricky. I regularly threw buckets of questions at Google with no concrete answers and looking up three hours later to realize I still can't make anything with code. I found endless content telling me learn the basics, variables, functions, all loop, classes, oop. What the hell is oop? Does this sound familiar to you? Do me a favour. Please tell me what you did. I would love to know. I tried online coding courses where they walk you through variables and functions and for loops and how to get the right syntax. I managed to get them to work, which was great. And then I started staring at this black box and felt like I forgot everything I just learned. Needless to say, I wasn't ready for NASA. I then thought... Maybe I should do another course. Maybe I missed something. So I'd start another course and only to realize it's the same shit. Now, let's be clear. It's not the course's fault. It's showing me what I needed to know. But that's not the whole problem I needed to solve. The real issue is not knowing what a variable, 
or a function is, the real problem I needed to solve at this point was understanding when code becomes useful. At this stage, I knew how to type variables and functions because that was the point of those courses. Was it helpful? Mm. Nope. Okay, so when does it become useful? I thought you'd never ask. We can make something on my website here, and I've got it all listed down below. If you're interested in making something right now, we can go ahead with that. Otherwise, I'm going to put a timestamp below and you can just skip forward to a little bit more about my story and a few things that I noticed and picked up along the way. So if you're interested in making something now and you don't know anything about coding. Hey friends, welcome. I've got some mood lighting here. Hope you're enjoying that. I've uh, got the neon happening. So we are going to make a cool little project. And we know nothing about coding, which is really exciting. So I've got my laptop opened up here. Yes, I'm using Windows, but don't worry if you're using Mac or Linux. I'll have a tutorial for that as well. So you won't be out of the loop and uh, everyone can follow along. So first thing I'm going to do is actually go to my website because I've got the instructions right there. So just put in musicwithcode.com, come back to coding here, and I'm just going to scroll down. There's a bit of a story there, and I've got a YouTube video that it kind of reads all this, um, and the next page as well. So feel free to check that out. But we're making stuff. So I'm just going to be quiet for a minute and read. So step one, download Python on your computer. If you don't have it on your computer already, it's very simple. So I've got here, you just go to the Python website here. This is the best way to do it. Whether you're on Mac or Linux, just copy the link. Or Windows, copy the link, come down to the downloads and click on that. And I'll realize that I'm on Windows and I just click download. I click through the widgets and it's really simple. So uh, you won't have any problems with that. It's very simple and um, compatible with everything. Windows, Linux, Mac OS, you name it, it's all good. Now, the other thing I will mention is that the version, just get the latest version, whatever this button is for you, just click it and download it. it, it um, you don't really wanna go with older versions at this point. Uh, if there's a new version out, go for it. Um, okay, so you've downloaded that. Now, to check that it's on your machine, let's do that first. So if you go down and hit the Windows key and type Python, you have like an idle app here and you've got all these other things that are going on. I've got 3.8 here, I've got 3.10 as well. So there's my latest version. So I can click on that, but we're going to do another thing here. We're going to start making our thing from scratch. So our project from scratch rather. So we are going to get out of this and we're just going to follow along with the instructions that I've got here. So um, first thing is to hit the Windows key. Step two, we're going to create a file the cool way. And what I mean by that is we're going to create it using the terminal. So we're going to hit the Windows key and it says type PowerShell. So I'm going to type PowerShell. Great. And I want to click run as administrator. So I'll click that and you should come up with a blue shell like this. So hopefully that looks something like what you're looking at and we're going to keep going. So this is starting to look a bit hackerish, isn't it? It's kind of cool. So the reason I'm getting you to use the terminal is because we want to get comfortable using this because that's how we run our Python files. And um, we're going to be using this a lot more. So getting comfortable with this is pretty important. So now that you're looking at this blue screen, we're going to come down here and we're going to type Python dash dash version. Python dash dash version. And it's coming up with Python. So I definitely know I have it on my computer. That's a good start. The next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to learn how to create a file. So pretty easy. How PowerShell, PowerShell has its own syntax and Python has its own syntax. So we'll get into more detail about that soon. But right now, to create a new file, we're going to type new item, new dash item, I should say, and then hit the parentheses. And I've got my instructions here saying test. So we're going to write test.py. This is a good sign. If we see this, that means we've made the file, which is fantastic. So we're going to keep scrolling down. And the next thing on the instructions, it says to type notepad, and then we'll type notepad. Fantastic. And then it's got dot, so we've got notepad, space, and there's a dot, then there's a backspace, and then test dot pi. So what we're doing here, I'm using notepad to open our test file, then we're going to hit enter. And look at that. We've created our Python file. So there's nothing in it at the moment. And we are going to type this out. So now that we've got our Python file created, so we've downloaded Python, we've got our Python file open. The next thing is to start writing code. So let's do that. Um, now you can copy and paste what's on my website, but I consider that to be a bit of bad practice. What we want to do with coding is get used to writing out what you would like to code and get comfortable writing the correct syntax, making sure the right spaces are in the right places. Um, so I think it's actually better to type it out. So that's what I'm going to do. If I expect you to do it, then I'm going to do it myself. C input. Okay, first thing I'm going to get you to do is once you've typed that all out like I have, I want you to have a look and let me know if this is the same as that. Okay, if you think it is the same, guess what? You are wrong. Yes, I've put spaces here as well, whereas here I haven't. So let's try and make it exactly the same. We may as well be precise. We're learning something new. Okay, so that's all I want you to write. Four lines of code. We're going to have space here. That's it. Too easy, right? So I'm going to save this. Now we can either minimize it or close it now that we've saved it. You know what? I'm feeling crazy. I'm going to close it. There we go. Gone. So now that we've got our Python file saved, how do we bring it back? How do we run our Python code? Simple. I'm going to scroll down on our instructions here and let's run our first thing. So we're just going to type, it says here, type Python and then the test file. So instead of notepad, we're going to use Python backspace test and we're going to use Python to run our Python file. This should work, right? Let's see what happens. We press enter. It's asking us, what do we want? What should we type here? Uh, stuff. Cool. Another thing. Um, things. And okay, last thing. So what I'm typing here is this anything really. Okay. And hit enter again. And it should print out the things that we have entered. And there we go. We have made our first project. Woo! We did it. Yes. We are coding experts. Well, not really. Not yet. Anyway, um, what we're going to do is now that we know how to create a Python file, we know how to write some code, and 
basically we're getting inputs and outputs, and hopefully that makes a bit of sense. We put inputs in here, and we got back our output here in our terminal or shell or PowerShell, whatever you want to call it. So now that we've done that, we want to customize it a bit. So getting inputs and outputs is great, but what I always gear towards is how is this actually useful in my day-to-day -day life? And I want to ask that question a lot when we're making things with code because a lot of the time you can learn things that are cool and all, but you'll never actually use them. And it's a bit of a shame, really. You, you want to learn new things and actually be able to use it all the time. So what I want to do, I've got some suggestions here in, in the instructions that this, this could be like a template. And I want to you know, pick your brain a bit and see if you can get better ideas than, better ideas than what I have. But I've got here, this is basically a, a template generator that we can use for inputs and outputs. So the ideas I've got are a cover letter. You can use this for a cover letter if you're applying for jobs, uh, an email template, you know, invitations to a party or something, um, or it can be a report for work, right? So these are just some basic template ideas that you can use. Um, but if you think of something else that is more applicable to your life, then great, let's go with that. Um, so what we're going to do is change our Python file that we've just created to something a bit more usable. So I've got here um, in our instructions a cover, le yeah, cover letter because I'm applying for jobs myself and I am using a version of this to apply for jobs and it's become very useful. So I am going to do this with you now. So if we need to, if we need to amend our Python file, we are going to need to open it again with our notepad so we can change it and edit it. So let's do that. And a cool little trick is hitting the up arrow key and it goes through all the past things you've run. And there we go. Notepad. So I just hit up twice and then enter. There we go. I've got our code back. All right. So now I'm just going to amend this and I've got over here on my instructions what I need to amend. So I'm just going to change the information here and get on with it. So I'll just type this out. I'm not copying and pasting because we are learning a new skill. And we should be typing this out to get comfortable with syntax. And this time, you know what? I'm going to put space because that's what we have here. Great. Enter. got an extra input here so we'll quickly do that equals input and hopefully after repeating this a couple of times we start to make sense of it and really it is this idea is pretty simple but it is also very effective and useful so I love showing people this uh, okay next thing we've got some new things we're going to introduce so we've got an F, some parentheses, and all these A, Bs, and Cs are now wrapped in squigglies. So let's do that first. Oh, there's a D as well. Uh, actually, we don't need them. So Great. So now that they're all wrapped in squigglies, so they're new things, we will make sense of this. Before actually we write anything more, let's just run this and we'll see if this makes any sense. So I'm going to save it. Cool. I'm going to close it because I'm crazy. And we're just going to see if this works. I hit my up arrow key twice and I've got using Python now to run my test file. And it looks like it's working, which is great. So I'm just going to scroll down here. 
enter recruiter, blah, company is Google, uh, can't add togetherness, and enter job title. Um, let's go HR. Sure, why not? Okay, cool. So it worked. It's got all our inputs and printed our output. So it's done the exact same. Let's go back to our file and edit it some more. So now that we know that these outputs are just going to print the same, the benefit of having this F, and we call it an F string, is that now we can just put text in between our inputs and that will all make sense and we won't need to put commas all the time to divide these up. We won't need to do any of that, which is great. So now we can just write text. So to dear A, and then we're just going to put, um, notice we've got these backspace ends. That's something new as well. That just means a new line. So if you put just backspace, it won't do anything. We need a backspace N, and we're going to do it twice. So that just gives us a new line. That's all that is. So now that we've got that, we can just start writing. And a great fit for working at Blah Company. Cool. Full stop. The next thing is space. I believe, believe I will be a great be well suited for the D role. Or roll, should say, well, yeah, job. Because I believe in the core value, your company stand for. And instead of D, that's actually a C. So I've mixed them around. Anyway, full stop. And then I'm going to do new line, new line. So new line, new line. And that's it. So let's see if this works. And we'll have our own, or you'll have your own, uh, cover letter. And you can kind of customize it how you would like. Um, but uh, let's see if it works. So we'll just make sure that all looking OK. We're going to save it. I'm going to close it. And let's use Python to run it. So, enter recruiter here. Sally. Enter company here. This is looking good so far. So, Google, let's say that. Um, value on the website. Um, searching for better. I don't know if that's the thing, but that makes sense, right? Um, <laughs> I'm just having fun here. And enter the job title. Uh, we're going to go IT. No, we're going to go, you know what, let's be hopeful, let's go programmer. Let's do that. Python programmer, let's say that. Yeah. All right. Will this work? Let's hit enter. Dear Sally, I'm a great fit for working at Google. I believe I would be well suited for the Python programmer job because I believe in the core values, value your company stands for, searching for better. See? It works. So you've just made something useful and you may not have known anything about code. So I'm happy to have walked that through with you and hopefully it makes sense. Um, now, scrolling down here, uh, if you have any issues or you would like to get in contact with me, I'm on Instagram and I'm on YouTube. You can leave a comment, um, obviously. And uh, look, I've even got my email here. So please send me an email if this has helped you. Um, I'm, uh, I'm really happy that we've made a, a project starting from absolute scratch and, um, uh, we got there in the end. And, uh, if you have any like 
red writing or errors that have happened, it could just be, and more often than not, it's just a syntax error. You've spelled something wrong or you haven't put a closed parentheses or, um, or something like that. So please check your syntax. That's pretty important when it comes to programming. But, um, but for now, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this helps for you starting your programming journey. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what else you create. Okay, all the best. Mac time. Let's see if we can follow the steps. And we have a Mac. So step one, download Python on your computer. So in Mac land, we'll go to Safari, type python.org. Let's have a look. It already knows we're on a Mac, which is fantastic. So you don't need to worry about, am I getting the right version? You just click and download the latest version. Click through the widgets. It's fairly simple. Okay, so we're going to move on from that. So we're going to pretend that we have downloaded Python and it's on our computer. How do we check? Let's make sure. So we've clicked through all the widgets. We've downloaded Python. Now we bring up our terminal. So you Mac users, I don't know, would get to the terminal by launchpad and typing terminal. Got that open. All right, we, and so we're using terminal instead of PowerShell. That's all fine. We're not gonna get a blue screen like PowerShell. We're using terminal. So does the same things, but just a, a different way of typing things out, a different syntax, you, would might, you may say. So the next thing is to check if it's on our computer, we type Python dash dash version. Now, you'll notice that that's not the version that you downloaded because the version you downloaded was Python 3 point something and you've got 2 point something. So little differences in how you get your, the right version to work for you. So instead of Python, we're going to write Python 3 space dash dash version. And let's see if we get a different result. Hey, look at this. So we want to use Python 3 because that's a later version. Python 2 is just, uh, you know, old school. We don't want to do old school. We're doing new school. So there's a difference. Let's see what else we can do. So now we want to create a Python file. And in the terminal, in PowerShell, we typed new item to get that new file. In the terminal, we're going to write touch and then test I. And that's created it. How good? Too easy, right? So touch instead of new item. Next thing, we want to open the file, our Python file that we just created, with Notepad. Now, on a Mac, you don't have Notepad, so we're going to use something else. Uh, on board, we're going to type nano space and then test Python. And we'll click that. Cool. We are now in our Python file. How good. Let's keep going. Step three, we are going to type out all our code. Yes, fantastic. Three inputs and then a print. So we're going to practice that. I'm just going to zoom through this. No, that didn't do it. Control X. Okay, save, modify, buffer. We'll type Y for yes. And then the file name to write it to is test.py. Yes, we want to do that. Enter. Okay, I think we've done it, but let's find out whether it worked. So we're going to use Python 3 space and then our file test.py. Looks like it's working. It worked. How good. So now we can do it on Windows and Mac. Downloading Python, putting it onto our machine, 
checking that it's the right version, using the right version, um, creating a file the cool way in the terminal, and now let's amend it. So we know that it works. The next thing is yeah, going through that added step of making it your own. But uh, just for fun, let's do it anyway. So let's just type out this. Okay, we're going to amend it. So we're going to go back into nano test. So yes, to save, great. Uh, enter to write to that and we've finally done that so let's check and see if this worked hooray so we've done it we've managed to do it on windows and mac so hope you uh enjoyed that and found that helpful okay so i left off with asking the question when does code become useful essentially when people talking about code they're mentioning languages like python Ruby, Node.js, Java, um, PHP, uh, Golang, uh, C Sharp, these languages. If you've heard them before, they're server-side languages. And essentially, logic that you can run on your computer locally, and your computer will be your server that you can run it on. But what's complicated about this is when people think they can make uh, software out of these languages, you're talking about server-side code. So typically you'll hear front-end and back-end. So server-side belongs to the back-end. So if you write a piece of logic, that's only one part of the problem here. And usually when you're thinking about making software, you think of a cool window with some buttons, and some animations and that kind of thing, that's actually front end and that's a whole other thing. So if you learn programming and you start learning a program language and start getting into variables and for loops and all those kinds of things, you're only just learning the logic behind it and not the cool pretty buttons that you get to create. That's front end development. So there's a lot to learn and you'll hear all these crazy terms and every now and again, you'll probably hear HTML, CSS uh, and creating websites. So I strongly recommend at least figuring out how to make a basic website because that's something tangible that you can get up and running very quickly um, with little to no knowledge. And it's something tangible that you can work on and keep playing with and it gives you almost an immediate satisfaction, you know, learning a, a, a server-side language that I mentioned before. It's not as much fun in the beginning, I don't think. So that's why I bring up making a website and I will give a link to uh, a simple tutorial of making an easy website. I'll walk you through everything. Websites can be fairly simple and I'm just gonna make you a, a blanket simple thing that you can at least get started with but getting back to front end and back end and server side languages and programming the reason that you'll see all these courses with getting you to learn variables and functions and for loops is it's kind of like the dictionary right you're learning words that you can put into this program to form logical sentences uh, so it's stuff you need to know but what it may not outline, and the learning platforms have probably gotten a lot better now than when I started. I guess three years, three and a half years is a long time for technology to, you know, make leaps and bounds. What, what context you may not get from those courses is setting up your workflow to create tools and things that are useful to you uh, quickly. Because it's one thing learning a few things on a website, but it's quite another to open up your computer and just start creating stuff with code. There's a huge gap there. And you're also, the other problem is, 
tied to whatever learning platform that is. And if they change anything, if they, uh, it's set up to how they want to teach it and it's probably good, but it's not the whole picture. You are learning one aspect of, of just backend technology um, or server side languages. Um, so things to think about. Anyway, the next page was after you've built something, hopefully you've gone through the tutorial I've just gone through now and um, at least you've made something of use and um, you can really tailor make that, whether it be a resume or a cover letter or just like an email template, whatever you like. Um, that's totally up to you. Now I'll just read you another page from my blog. Now for my next trick. Hopefully you've managed to get through all the steps and make your first project from scratch. With minimal understanding about programming, you can see the potential and hopefully you can. You've already done so much better than what I did when I first started and that's true. It took me ages to get started. As I've explained, I've wasted months looking at endless content about all the complexities about programming without writing a simple line of code. That's true. I don't recommend this. My aim in this blog is for you to try programming and start making cool stuff as soon as you can. I can't stress that enough. Other myths you don't really need to worry about at this stage. Please listen to me. If you hear or see on YouTube uh, or wherever, um, what programming language should I learn? Don't worry about it at this point. Just learn something. And I started with Python. Just pick Python. Just don't worry about all the hype and, oh, if I learn a language and it's not going to be around in five years, it's going to be around. You're learning the principles at this stage. You'll be doomed otherwise. Don't buy into that. You're learning Python if you're with me. So don't worry about that. How long does it take until you're job ready? Don't worry about that either. Um, you're not worried about a job at this stage. You are just trying to grapple and understand basics about how programming is useful to your life. That's it. Don't worry about a job. Job will come later. I'm three and a half years in and now I'm starting to get comfortable at looking at jobs and getting a job. So not, I'm not saying it takes three years to do it. All I'm saying is the amount of time does not matter at this point. It's an argument that is not worth, you know, agonizing over for months and months. Just drop it. When am I ready for a boot camp? Forget boot camps. They're expensive. Once again, you are just starting out. Forget boot camps. Should I go to uni? Um, I went to uni to do a master's in IT and I very rarely did any software development stuff. Um, all the cool stuff that I learned was YouTube and articles and blogs and podcasts even. Um, they're getting bigger and bigger. So you don't need to find this information at uni. Um, actually, one thing I will add is that at uni, they'll teach you Java, probably. Java, or they'll teach you probably a dated way of doing things. Um, the good thing about YouTube is that everyone's out for the newest thing and wanting to learn it and get their hands on it. And that's kind of good. If you've got your hands on a, a new set of technology and you know how to use it, um, you'll be ahead of a lot of other people. Um, but should I go to uni? No, not for this. Should I buy courses or books? Yes, yes, buy courses and buy books. Uh, you'll be more invested if you buy it than you consume it for free. I'll say that with one caveat that comes to mind is YouTube's amazing and it's free. Uh, you'll learn a lot just from YouTube, but I'm going to recommend one book to check out because I just think it's incredible for anyone learning to code. Um, I'll mention that later. Okay. So put all these nagging questions aside. I'm just going to run through them quickly once more. What programming language to learn? How long does it take to get job ready? When am I ready for a boot camp? Should I go to uni? Should I buy courses or books? If yes, 
to either which ones? Put all those questions to the side. Okay. If you've tried to find content about the basics of getting job ready with coding, you'll have some trouble. Hopefully it's gotten better, but when I started learning, it was, yeah, a whole lot of jargon and confusing language. Um, I know this because I've done this for you. It's really not easy. The question I ask myself is, what is something small that I can put to use? Yep, nothing. I couldn't find anything. Um, Everything had a prerequisite and you had to learn some other piece of technology that you'd never heard of and it just wasn't helpful. It was really hard to find something that you could just do a small little project without knowing next to nothing and putting it to use in your daily life. That's very hard to find. Anyway, this is a huge problem. Learning platforms and courses don't talk about how to set up your workflow practices to start a project. This is a huge problem. After a while of going back and forth between courses and not really understanding them and giving up, I gave up many times. I struggled to find a single little program that made sense to me, let alone be something useful. A widget, a script, a GUI. Nope. I'm obviously asking way too much here. The real thing is, I'm not asking for too much. There really should be some content out there, and hence why I'm doing this. Hopefully, this reaches you and helps you. So, at this point, I was at a loss. I bought books, big books. I read The Software Developer's Guide by Sean Sonmez. That's almost 1,000 pages. Read that. Uh, Cracking the Coding interview, which is great. Um, countless articles and blogs, the overwhelming content of YouTubers trying to explain the best path to take. Forget the best path to take. Just pick a path and do it. Simple. Keep it simple. I couldn't find anything that linked the wide stretch chasm in between where I was and where I wanted to be. Let's look at what's next. Okay. If you're still with me, awesome. I'm going to recommend you to buy one book. It's 30 bucks. I am in no way, shape or form affiliated with this book. Uh, I don't get any money from it, but it is so good for someone learning to code and trying to make sense of it. And that is Learn Python the Hard Way by Zed Shaw. He sounds like a superhero and for me, he kind of is. He, I'll read you more about what I think about his book. So. He gets straight down to business. It's truly no nonsense. He makes you write out strings and functions, which a lot of the other courses do, yes. But he also makes projects at every step of the way, making things tangible. This is where the online stuff fails you as you're learning something new. He immediately creates context for each project. So every time you write out a piece of code, he's got a project for you, something to make, which is awesome. At last, we have context. He finally addresses the problem of learning about something, then applying it to a real life situation. Think about this for a minute. You don't learn English by memorizing a dictionary. You learn simple words, you put them together in small sentences, that are useful for you straight away. How much is this? Where's the toilet? Can I have a kiss? No. All those things. Context. They're useful to you straight away. And this is what we need to do with code too, and that's my intention. So, Zed guides you through small projects and gets you comfortable with creating new projects, taking things slow, making sure you know why you need to learn these concepts like OOP and modules and classes. Another important component is comments. It gets you to write comments explaining the code you just wrote. This is important. It forces you to put into words what you have just learned. It also makes sure if you ever forget something, which you will, you've made your own personalized textbook that is in your own words, so hopefully you should be able to understand it 
By the end of Learn Python the Hard Way, you create a web app in Python, which is true. Uh, you're using Flask as well there, and you know, we'll talk all about that. Um, and you can use that, a web app, and you can brag to all your friends and show people, and you can host it on a dev server, which they show you to do, and I can show you to do as well. And anyone can see it, you know. Um, put it as a link on your basic website that we're going to make, and boom, you've made a website and a web app. And hopefully you didn't have to sink too much money. I think the book is $30, nothing. Um, and hopefully you haven't sunk too many months of asking crazy questions about what a serverless function is when you're just beginning to learn how to code. Um, so, moving on. Let's fast forward a bit. What happens next? So, I've been coding for three and a half years. Um, now I'm at the point where I've, I've made hundreds of projects. And after a while of doing this, you get very comfortable at the structure of how you're meant to work. And now I'm up to the stage where I want to help beginners while pushing myself to learn cool things, right? I want to make cool stuff. So at, the, at this point, I have made an Android app that is almost ready to put onto the Google platform um, on the Play Store, and I'm going to do that. So I'll let you know when that's totally finished. I've also made web apps myself. I made a desktop app, made a lot of websites. I have made a lot of scripts that are useful for more like IT support type stuff. Um, automation tools is another thing which is really cool. So I've made a lot of stuff and, and I would like to go through all of them with you. It may take a bit of time, but uh, I will probably select you know, some projects that will be more beginner friendly and um, we can go through and, and try and make all of those. Uh, there's some great content out there, which I learned all this from and most of it was from YouTube. So if you'd like me to run through them, I'll screw it. I'm not going to ask you. I'm just going to do it. So <laughs> I will start making those videos and hopefully you enjoy the way I teach. Ah, uh, yes. If you're beginning with a project in mind, I want to immediately steer you to something to put in the YouTube search bar and have a poke around with. So um, three main projects that if you have a project in mind and you want to get started straight away, but you don't know what technology is and you're a bit confused, let me help you straight away. I want to give you some useful tips. If you're wanting to make an Android app, I want to get you to put into the search bar Kivi library with Python. I'll put the spelling here. If you're wanting them to make a web app, search Flask app with Python. Again, it's all with Python here. Or if you want to make a static website, put HTML and CSS basic website template. Anyway, search those three things for those three projects if you want to start making stuff straight away and you'll find some great content and you can start making some cool stuff straight away. Uh, the trick is finding that very good resource where the way they teach matches how you learn. Um, there'll be heaps of stuff out there. Good luck in your searches. So hopefully this has been helpful to you learning something new that you may not have any idea about but want to gain clarity on, that's something that I am hell-bent on trying to put out to the world to get rid of all the noise because there is so damn much of it. So um, stay tuned if you want to see more and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.